Hey, what's up, y'all? It's David Draftbit, and I've got an update for you. Um, we have released Drawer Navigator. So this is something that a lot of people have asked for. And recently, we were finally able to bring it into Draftbit. So I'm pretty happy that I get to show you how this works. I'm going to switch over to Navigate. And I've got four screens here in my Root Navigator. I'm just going to select the Root Nav. And up here in the plus button where you can add a new navigator, there's a new option to add Drawer Nav. So I'm going to pop that in. And the first thing I want to do is drag some of these screens up into that drawer navigator. So I'm going to move these up. And then I'm going to select my drawer navigator here. And the first thing I want to do is you might notice we've actually got two headers here and most people are just going to want this bottom header here associated with the screens. So I can disable this parent header by coming over to the configs tab, scroll down here to the header section, and there's an option to hide parent header. So just turn that on. And now I've got a nice clean header with my new hamburger icon. And when I click on that, here's my drawer nav. So I've got and actually, I want to move this one back out and this one in. Sorry about that. OK, so I've got my properties, account, and as I click through, they already work. So now we're just ready to do some customization. First thing, let me show you. Whenever you add screens to the navigator, just like with tab nav, in fact, if you've ever used tab navigator before, using drawer navigator is essentially exactly the same. So you draw, uh, you drag your screens into it, and then once you do, you'll get an item here for each one of those screens. And in my case, I've got this properties, account, and favorites. So the first thing I want to do is reorder these a little bit. I want my first one to be. Um, properties yes but i want my second one to be favorites and i want my last one to be account so i've updated all these the route is just going to be the screen that the menu item is going to take you to so now i've got my order updated and the second thing i can do is take a look at their label and icon so by default the label is going to use whatever name you've given to your screen but you can override these. So if I wanted, for instance, to have this be home, instead I can just fill in this label and take a look. And now I've got a new label here for my menu item. All right, and so now lastly, I can add an icon. So we'll do home. For favorites, I'll do a bookmark and account. I can do a person. All right, cool. Let's check that out. So now I've got my menu items and I've got my icons, and I'm ready to customize a little bit more the styling. So let's take a look at the styling real quick. Switching over to the styles tab, um, you can customize the colors right here in this section here, the color section. So the background color is going to obviously be this background color of the whole drawer. And you can use your brand colors or any other uh, custom palettes that you have, or you can use the base colors. So I'll choose uh, I'll look at some 600 colors here and just choose, uh, how about pink? All right, so there you go. Now you can see that we need to do a little bit more tidying up with our colors, but the next one here is overlay color. So I'll do that one first, and that's going to be this color right here. So whatever color is overlaid over that background content, that kind of gets hidden by the drawer. That's going to be controlled by this overlay color. By default, it's basically black um, with some transparency. 
And so you can change that to be whatever you want. I'll leave that here for now and move on to the active item. So this is going to be the active item, whatever uh, menu item is associated with the currently selected screen will have a little bit of different style, the active item. And so I can control those styles here in this section. I can change my text to strong inverse. And maybe I want my background to be like 500 of that pink, a little bit lighter. We take a look at that. So you can see now got my styling looking a little better and this icon is going to use the text color by default but if I wanted to do like a 700 in that pink I could do that to give it a little bit of a different look I'm going to remove that for now and so the next thing is going to be the inactive items that's going to be these right here oops I did the wrong color 600 pink here and remove the icon color okay there we go so the next one is going to be the um and i did the wrong color here it doesn't really matter but i'm gonna i'm gonna make it right okay there we go all right the next one is going to be inactive so that's for the screens that are listed but not the currently selected screen and Usually you're, you do something slightly different. So I'll use light inverse for these. So it's not quite as bright. And I think that looks pretty good. So let's talk about the next thing, this uh, header. So we added this icon by default, a little hamburger icon. And it's on the left side by default. But we can change that. There's this prop for position in the configs panel. And if I change this over to right, it's going to swap that out and move it over to the right side automatically. OK, I'm going to swap that back, though, and talk about some of these other ones. This default status is going to be whatever um, state by default when the page loads. It's closed obviously by default um, but you can change that default to be open in which case every time the screen loads it will be open by default kind of a niche um, selection but there if you need it and also you can change the type so let's talk about the type the default is front and if you'll notice, my screen content just basically stays static. And as I open my drawer, the whole drawer just slides in over the content. So that's front. Then that's the default. Let's check out back. If you'll notice, in this one, the drawer nav doesn't actually slide over. The screen content slides over to reveal the drawer, which is static. So almost a reverse of the other one and kind of a cool effect to reveal. Um, the next one is going to be slide. This one actually, the drawer nav pushes over all of the screen content to the side. So if you remember on that front one, the screen content stayed where it was and the drawer just kind of slid over on top of it. But this one, the drawer kind of like pushes the screen out of, out of its way and makes room for itself. So that's cool. And then the next one is going to be permanent. And it's just open all the way, all the time. Again, that's kind of more of a niche one. Um, I kind of like back. I like that one. So I'll leave that. This last prop here, swipe to reveal, is um, handy for specifically iOS. So like if you use iOS, you know that you can swipe left or swipe to go back. And so sometimes that can cause some conflict when you've got a drawer nav where you can slide it open, which you can. You can slide this drawer nav over from the, the left side or the right side, depending on which uh, side you have it set to. 
Um, but you can disable that to prevent any conflict with iOS in a, in a specific case where you need the user to be able to swipe back while there is a drawer nav present on the screen. All right, so let's see what else we can talk about. Let's switch back to styles and I'm gonna come all the way down to the bottom and there's some props here for header. So I can change the font of this header text here. I can also change the text color and the background and the border. So if I wanted my background to be that same 600 pink as my drawer nav, I can do that. And then update that text to be something like strong in verse. So now I've got that customized, looking good. Now this hamburger icon is what is shown by default, but there are cases where you might want to customize this. And I can do that in the configs tab coming down depending on whichever side that you have this configured to this position if it's set to left like in my case then down here for the left area under the header i can customize the icon right here and if you've got your drawer nav set to be on the right side then you can use the right area icon so in this case it's the left side and i'll just search for something here I can show you. And now I've got my updated icon. One thing to note is just like with the other navigators, whenever you override this left area or right area icon, we basically hand over full control of that button to you whenever you customize the icon. And that means that we remove whatever default actions that we have, which is the toggle drawer. And so you'll need to add that back, but it's super easy. All you gotta do is switch over to interactions tab and depending on which side you've got your drawer nav on, on my, in my case, it's the left side, there's a new action here to toggle drawer. And I just need to add that and that's it. After I add that, I'll have that, um, functionality back in my app. And then obviously you can use that same action with any other component or any other trigger um, throughout your app. So you're not limited to opening the drawer just from a swipe or a click up here in the top nav. So you could totally remove your header if you want and build a custom header and then have a custom button using that trigger or using that uh, action to open up your nav however you need it. All right, let's see what else we can talk about. I think that's pretty much it. One last thing is the, um, you can also completely customize it just like you can with Tab Navigator using a custom block. And I'm not gonna dive into it here, but um, there is some docs related to how you can set up a custom nav in a, a, using a block. And in that case, um, you'll have free rain of how you want to customize it. You can use any of the available components in your block, and then um, you just basically assign it here. So I've got like a custom drawer nav block here already, and I can assign that. There's nothing actually in there at the moment, but I can show you real quick, coming into this custom drawer nav, any components that I add into this block will have access to several different variables and variable dropdowns, which expose all of the route data. So check out the docs for more on that. But um, if you need complete control, total customization, it's there for you. Um, all you gotta do is uh, use one of the custom blocks. So let me take a look and see if there's anything big that I missed. Yeah, I think that's basically it. Um, definitely play around with it. Let me know what you think. Hope you enjoy it. I'm going to remove this and give you one last look. I can just remove that block and it should bring everything right back the way it was. So yeah, that's a quick look at Jornav. Um, try it out. Let us know what you think. Hope you like it and I'll see you soon.